we are going to start now the next lecture lecture 8 of class 11th mathematics chapter 5 complex numbers and quadratic equations so in this lecture we will study some geometric properties of complex numbers so first of all we are going to talk about the vector representation of a complex number so we are saying suppose that uh, we have a complex number z uh, that is of the form x plus iota y uh, where x and y these are the uh, real numbers and iota we know that is equal to square root of minus 1 then this complex number this can be represented in the plane uh, as a point p x y where this x is the x coordinate y is the y coordinate and if we talk about this vector we are representing this point over here p x y this is our x axis this is y axis and uh, we are talking about this vector o p this vector is vector o p and we are saying this vector is basically x i cap plus y j cap and length of this vector is the modulus of the complex number z and the angle it makes with the x axis with the positive direction of x axis that is theta that is the argument of z so we are saying that every complex number it can be represented by a vector op uh, now we are going to talk about the uh, geometric representation of algebraic operations on complex numbers and the first operation we are talking over here it is sum of the two complex numbers so suppose we are saying that we have two complex numbers one is z1 it is x plus iota y and second is z2 it is x2 uh, plus iota y2 z1 is x1 plus iota y1 z2 is x2 plus iota y2 and we can represent these two numbers in the argon plane as we are saying this is our plane this is the x axis this is y axis uh, corresponding to the point x1 y1 we are saying this is the point p that is x1 y1 and uh, this is the point q say it is x2 y2 this is representing the number z2 this is representing the number z1 and the corresponding vectors we have this is o q vector and this vector we have it is o p vector so these are the two vectors we are seeing now to if we add these two vectors we know that we have to use the parallelogram to find the sum of these two vectors so we are saying that we have completed this parallelogram over here these two lines these are parallel these two lines these are parallel we obtain this is the point r we are talking about now if we join this point p and q and o and r we have a point over here and this point is basically the midpoint of these two we are saying this point is the midpoint of p q so the coordinates of this point we are saying the coordinates of this point they are x1 plus x2 by 2 comma y1 plus y2 by 2 and this point this point we are talking about this is also the midpoint of uh, these two this line o r so the coordinates of this point r it is x1 plus x2 comma y1 plus y2 so we are saying that uh, this point r it is representing the number it is this point r it is representing the number z1 plus z2 that is equal to x1 plus x2 plus iota y1 plus y2 this is equal to x1 plus iota y1 plus x2 plus iota y2 that is equal to z1 plus z2 so we are saying that this point r over here this represents the number z1 plus z2 this is the geometrical representation of addition of two complex numbers so we are saying that if z1 and z2 are the two complex numbers then the sum z1 plus z2 we can obtain this point r by the parallelogram law of vector addition next is difference of two numbers so suppose we have two numbers p and q again we are talking about explaining it over here we are having two numbers one is the point we are saying this is the point p z1 we have and this is the point q z2 we have and we want to calculate the value of z1 minus z2 
it means we are calculating the value of z1 plus minus of z2 now what is minus of z2 if z2 is the number x2 plus iota y2 then minus of z2 will be this number so it means if we are saying that z2 is this vector we are saying then minus of z2 will be the vector in the opposite direction this is the point say q dash we are saying it is of minus of z2 now corresponding to this point p we have this is the vector we are having corresponding to the point p now to find the value of z1 plus minus of z2 what we have to do is we are saying that we have to draw a line parallel to this line so this point we are saying it is q dash we are drawing the line parallel to o q dash over here and we are drawing a line parallel to o p dash like this we are drawing these two lines and this is a parallelogram we have obtained and if we name this point as r this is the vector we are saying this is o r so this is representing the point z1 plus minus of z2 that is this point is representing z1 minus z so this is how we can represent the point z1 minus z2 uh, in the vector form that is this is the geometrical representation of difference of two complex numbers next is product of two complex numbers so we are saying again that we have two complex numbers one is z1 second is z2 and uh, we are representing these numbers over here we are representing these numbers in this way this is the plane we have and we are saying that the point p and q we have this is the point p z1 and suppose this is the point q z2 now we want to find the representation of z1 into z now if we write both these numbers in the polar form we are writing both these numbers in the polar form so polar form means we are talking about we have joined these two points the value of this is r1 and value of this angle it is theta1 we are writing z1 is equal to r1 uh, cos theta1 plus iota sin theta1 or in Euler form we can write it is r1 e raised to the power iota theta1 and uh, when we are talking about z2 we are saying suppose it is r2 cos theta2 plus iota sin theta2 that is equal to r2 e raised to power iota theta2 so the angle this length we have it is r2 and this angle we have it is theta 2 this whole angle we are saying this is theta 2 now if we multiply both these numbers we are talking about z1 into z2 when we multiply both these numbers the answer we have is it is r1 into r2 both of these are positive numbers and the angle we have it is iota theta 1 plus theta 2 so we have to construct a point whose uh, uh, the value of whose uh, whose distance from the origin o it is r1 r2 and its angle should be theta 1 plus theta 2 so to do this construction uh, we are going to mark a point a on the x axis which is at a unit distance this is one unit distance then we join this point a and p we join this point a and p and we obtain this triangle we are talking about this triangle OPA. We have obtained this triangle. This angle over here it is theta 1 and this length it is R1. Now, taking OQ as the base, we are saying if we take OQ as the base, we are going to construct a triangle OQR. We are going to construct a triangle OQR. Some point R should be there. And we are going to construct a triangle over here O Q R such that the triangle we are talking about triangle O Q R and triangle O P A. These two triangles these are similar. These two triangles these are similar. And we should have O R over O Q should be equal to O P over O A. So from this what we will get is, so this will imply us that OR will be OP into OQ because the value of OA we have taken it is of 
unit length so we will obtain that the value of or we will have that will be op that is r1 and oq is r2 so the length of this will be r1 into r2 we are saying this o to r length will be r1 into r2 both these two angles will be similar so if then this angle is theta 1 then this angle is theta 1 so the total angle we have over here so this total angle we have over here this will be theta 1 plus theta 2 so this is the required vector we are saying this is the required point r which is having the length r1 r2 and which is having the angle theta 1 plus theta 2 so this is the point we are talking about this is z1 into z so this is how we can construct the point r1 obtain the point r r uh, which is the product of the two complex numbers z1 and z2 next is multiplication with iota so suppose we are saying that we have any complex number say we i am talking about any complex number z is there this is the point p we are saying this is corresponding to the complex number z that is x plus iota y or it is of the form z is equal to r e raised to the power iota theta we are going to multiply this complex number z with iota the answer will be when we are saying we are multiplying it with iota iota we can write it is e raised to the power iota pi by 2 r e raised to the power iota theta so the answer we obtain e raised to the power iota theta plus pi by 2 so what we obtain is that this point this new point we are saying this new point iota z will be basically r will be same this is the length r and this over here the angle it is theta now it is further rotated by a value of pi by 2 in the positive direction so we are saying this point will be over here we are saying that this is just a rotation and this point will be rotated by a positive angle of pi by 2 and this is the point iota z that we similarly if we multiply a number with minus 1 if we multiply a number with minus 1 we are saying the value of theta we will have uh, this minus 1 its representation is e raised to the power iota pi saying it is e raised to the power iota pi so the number will be uh, the new number we are saying minus z will be r e raised to the power iota theta plus pi so we are saying this number is basically you can also look it as minus x minus iota y or you can look it in this form that the angle with which it is rotated it is pi this length it is r this point it will represent minus of z you can also look it as it is minus of x minus of iota y so this is the point representing minus of z similarly we are saying that if any number is multiplied with e raised to the power iota alpha any number z is there that is r e raised to the power iota theta we are multiplying with any number e raised to power iota alpha it means we are talking about cos theta plus uh, cos alpha plus iota sin alpha so we are saying when we multiply these numbers the new number will be z e raised to power iota alpha that is equal to r e raised to the power theta plus alpha so what this thing represent is that the length of this vector will remain same and the angle will change by an amount of alpha the angle will change by an amount of alpha in positive direction so if alpha is negative it will be in negative direction if alpha is positive it will be in positive direction so positive means anti clockwise direction so this is basically the multiplication of iota minus 1 or any particular complex number a purely complex number with the complex number z next we have is the division of the complex numbers so we are saying again we have two complex number one is z1 its representation is r1 e raised to power iota theta 1 second is z2 its representation is r2 e raised to power iota theta 2 we are calculating z1 by z2 and we know that for z1 by z2 the value of mod will be r1 by r2 and the value of argument will be theta 1 minus theta 2 so we want to express this number on the argument plane so again we are considering suppose we are drawing it over here we are saying this is these are our x's these are our x axis and y axis this is x axis 
this is y axis this point p is z1 and this point q is z2 now if we plot the vectors over here we join this point o with p we obtain this is the vector r1 uh, this is the length r1 and this will be having the length r2 and the angle over here this angle will be theta1 and this angle over here we have it is theta2 so these are the representations of the point z1 and z2 now we want to represent the point z1 by z2 now to construct this point we are again marking a point a on the x axis uh, this length we are saying this is one unit length now at the point a we have to draw a line from this point a we are going to draw a line uh, which whose angle this angle we are saying we have joined the points p and q and this angle we are saying both these angles should be equal we have drawn a line at uh, the point a which makes equal angle with OA, uh, the angle equal to O P Q. So both these angles, these are equal. Next, we are going to draw a line from O over here, and the angle it makes with this O X that should be equal to. We are saying, uh, suppose this point where they are intersecting, it is R. So we are saying that we have drawn the lines such that angle R O A is equal to angle p o q and we have drawn this angle o a r that is equal to angle o p q now what we get from this is that both these triangles we are talking about the triangle o p q that is similar to the triangle o a r so this implies us that O R over O A is equal to O P over O Q. The value of O A we have taken it is 1. So this implies us that O R is equal to R1 by R2. And further this angle. We are saying this angle over here it is theta 1. This angle is theta 2. These two angles these are equal to each other. So this angle we have that is equal to theta 2 minus theta 1. This angle we are saying that is theta 2 minus theta 1 and uh, we can write it is minus of theta 1 minus theta 2 this angle we are writing it is minus of theta 1 minus theta 2 so we are saying that this point r we are having over here this point r it will represent the number z1 by z2 so this is how we can represent the division of two numbers graphically Next we have is, suppose Z1, Z2, Z3, these are the fixes of three points A, B, C. I am drawing these points over here. Uh, we are saying these are the three points. One is this point A, this is the point C and uh, this is the point B. This is A, B and C. This is representing Z2, this is representing Z3 and this is representing the point Z1. Now, if we... Uh, draw the vectors over here we are talking about the vector ac this is the vector ac we are drawing over here and we are talking about the vector ab this is the vector ab we have drawn over here and uh, we are saying that the argument of ac vector it is the argument of ac vector it is theta so we are saying this angle it is theta and the argument of ab vector it is then if the angle between this we are talking about these two lines over here a b and a c if the angle between these two is alpha then this angle is equal to alpha this is the exterior angle corresponding to these two interior angles so we obtain that alpha is equal to theta minus phi so from this what we are saying is uh, what is the value of theta we are saying theta is basically the argument of when we are talking about this value theta it is argument of uh, z3 minus z1 and phi is the argument of 
we are talking about the angle phi it is argument of z2 minus z1 we are subtracting these values we are saying this is equal to argument of z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 so what we obtain is that this angle alpha between a b and a c we are saying it is equal to argument of z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 so we obtain from this is that if we have to calculate z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 we can write it is equal to mod of z3 minus z1 over mod of z2 minus z1 e raised to the power iota alpha that is equal to a c over a b e raised to the power iota alpha so we have obtained the result we are saying we are having the points over here this is the point a this is the point c and this is the point b these are corresponding to z1 z2 and z3 we are joining the points a b and c and this angle we are saying this is alpha then we have proved that z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 that is equal to a c by b c e raised to the power iota alpha we are saying this is equal to mod of z1 minus z3 divided by mod of z2 minus uh, z3 minus z1 z2 minus z1 e raised to the power iota alpha so now we are considering suppose we have these points we are saying this is the point we are saying p z1 this is q z2 r z3 and this is the point z4 and the angle between all these it is uh, the angle between c d and a b we are saying it is theta now the first case we are considering is if a b and uh, c d they coincide when they coincide this thing implies us that the value of theta is either 0 or it is pi so from these results we can see that the value of z1 minus z2 over z3 minus z4 this will be a real this will be purely a real and then the points we are saying a b c d they are collinear these points will be collinear so we are saying that if we have to prove that these four points these are collinear then we have to prove that z1 minus z2 over z3 minus z4 is a real number similarly we are saying if these lines these are perpendicular if these lines these are perpendicular then we will have the value of argument over here the value of argument over here that will be minus pi by 2 so z1 minus z2 over z3 minus z4 will be purely imaginary in this case these uh, if it means that if we have to prove that these two lines these are perpendicular to each other so we have to prove that this result it is purely imaginary next is if z1 minus z2 is equal to plus minus k times z3 minus z4 where k is purely imaginary number where k is any purely imaginary number then we are saying that a b and c d are perpendicular to each other so we are saying these two number these are perpendicular to each other based upon this we are going to solve a problem over here it is complex numbers z1 z2 z3 are the vertices of a b c respectively of an isosceles right angled triangle which is right angled at c so we are saying these are the points this is z1 this is z2 this is z3 and this triangle it is right angled at c we have to prove that z1 minus z2 square is equal to 2 times z1 minus z3 into z3 minus z2 now it is given that angle a c b this angle we are saying it is of measure 90 degree and uh, a c it is an isosceles triangle it means these two sides the length of these two sides these are equal to each other so if we write uh, uh, this value it is given to be pi by 2 so we are talking about the value of z1 minus z3 over z2 minus z3 
the answer we will have it is a c by b c into e raised to the power iota pi by 2 a c and b c these are equal now the value of e raised to the power iota pi by 2 it is iota so this thing implies us that z1 minus z3 is equal to iota times z2 minus z3 now if we square both sides of this equation we obtain it is z1 minus z3 square that is equal to minus of z2 minus z3 square now if we open this whole square we obtain it is uh, z1 square plus z3 square minus 2 z1 z3 that is equal to minus of z2 square minus of z3 square plus 2 z2 z3 so the answer we require it should be z1 minus z2 square so we are writing it is z1 square plus z2 square that is equal to minus of 2 times z3 square uh, plus 2 times z2 z3 plus 2 times z1 z3 now if we subtract 2 times z1 z2 on both sides we obtain this term is z1 minus z2 square that is the this term we are saying it is the left hand side of this equation and look at this term if we write 2 common we are left with is minus z3 square plus z2 z3 plus z2 uh, z1 z3 and uh, minus z1 uh, z2 so if we take z3 common from this we obtain the value as minus z3 plus z2 if we take z1 common from this we get z3 minus z2 so on adjusting these terms we obtain the this is equal to right hand side of this equation and another way to solve this is we are saying this angle it is 90 degree these two sides these are equal then the value of these two angles will be pi by 4 these two angles will be say theta and theta so we will have th 2 theta is equal to 90 so the value of theta we will have that is equal to pi by 4 so if we write the value of z2 minus z1 over z3 minus z1 the answer we will have that is equal to b a by c a e raised to the power iota pi by 4 and if we write the value of z3 minus z2 divided by z1 minus z2 the value we have it is c b by a b e raised to the power iota pi by 4 now if we divide both these equations we will obtain the final answer in this so it is up to you that how you want to solve these kind of problems. Next is complex numbers z1, z2, z3 are the vertices of a triangle ABC. These are the vertices of a triangle ABC and it is an equilateral triangle. It means all these angles are pi by 3. We have to show that z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square is equal to z1, z2 plus 2 uh, z2 z3 plus z3 z1 so all these angles these are of measure pi by 3 so if we are writing the value of z1 minus z2 we are talking z1 minus z2 over z3 minus z2 z3 minus z2 it is an equilateral triangle both sides are a so we are writing it is a over a e s to the power iota pi by 3 similarly if we write z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 the answer we will have it is a by a e raised to the power iota pi by 3 so in both the cases we are saying that the values are equal so we obtain z1 minus z2 over z3 minus z2 is equal to z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 now if we multiply these terms if we cross multiply these terms uh, we will obtain the values as this will be the uh, whole square over here so we obtain it is minus of z1 minus z2 whole square and this will be z3 minus z1 into z3 minus z2 and on multiplying these terms 
uh, we obtain it is minus of z1 square plus z2 square minus of z2 times z1 z2 is equal to z3 square minus z3 z2 minus z1 z3 plus z1 z2 so uh, this thing implies us that z1 square plus z2 square plus z3 square that is equal to uh, these terms are there so when we shift these terms on this side the answer we obtain that is equal to z1 z2 plus z2 z3 plus z3 z1 next we have is for the equilateral triangle with vertices z1 z2 z3 the value of z1 minus z2 square uh, that we have equal to minus of z3 minus z1 into z3 minus z2 similarly we can write the value of z2 minus z3 square and we can write the value of z3 minus z1 square and if we all add all these values we obtain that the sum of all these values this first term we are saying the sum of all these values it comes out to be equal to 0 the sum of all these values comes out to be 0 next is from this term we are saying that z1 minus z2 square we are writing it is equal to z2 minus z3 into z3 minus z1 so this result is clear from this value similarly we can obtain this second result uh, this third result from here that if we are adding all these terms then we get the answer in this form and last value it is 1 over z1 minus z2 plus 1 over z2 minus z3 plus 1 over z3 minus z1 if we calculate if we take the LCM over here the numerator part we have that will be just this term we are saying the third result and the answer we obtain it is 0 so we are saying that for an equilateral triangle we have uh, all these results the results may be in this form it may be in this form we can derive this from this result we can derive this third part and from this we can derive this fourth part so the basic idea behind all these is we are using this result the basic idea is that we are using the same result next is complex number as rotating arrow in the argent plane so this thing we have already seen in our previous lectures that uh, if we represent a complex number we are saying this is the region o this is the complex number z we are saying and this is the vector corresponding to it this is r and this is theta and uh, if we multiply this complex number we are saying this z with e raised to the power iota phi we are saying the answer we will get suppose the representation of z it is r e raised to the power iota theta we are multiplying it with e raised to the power iota phi we are saying the resulting number is r e raised to the power iota theta plus phi this value we are saying it is phi so this number the radius vector we are saying the modulus it is same and the vector it has rotated by an angle of phi in the anti-clockwise direction and this is the value we are saying e raised to the uh, z e raised to the power iota phi so we are saying that if we multiply z with e raised to the power iota phi then it rotates it by an angle of phi in the clockwise anti-clockwise sense and if we multiply it with e raised to the power minus iota phi the result will be e raised to the power iota theta minus phi so it means this is rotating it in the clockwise sense we will have this number over here and uh, this is q e raised to the power uh, z e raised to the power minus iota phi and this will be rotated by an angle of phi in the clockwise sense this angle there this this vector this will be rotated by an angle of phi in the clockwise sense so based upon this we are saying suppose we have three numbers we are saying a is z1 b is representing z2 and the c is representing z3 and they are such that a b is equal to we are saying this length and this length both these length these are equal then the vector a b vector we are saying that is basically z2 minus z1 and the vector AC vector we are saying it is Z3 minus Z1. Now, 
we can see that both the lengths these are r and this number z3 is obtained by rotating z2 by an amount theta and uh, what we get from this is that a c vector that we are obtaining by rotating a b vector by an amount of theta now what is a c vector we are saying it is z3 minus z1 that is equal to z2 minus z1 e raised to power iota theta so this gives us that z3 minus z1 over z2 minus z1 is equal to e raised to power iota theta but this thing holds only when we are saying that this a c is equal to a b if these two are not equal then we cannot use this kind of result because we will have r over here this term r will be over there because if we are saying this is the point a that is z1 this is the point b that is z2 and so this is the point c that is z3 and we have the values this value is r and this value is r1 and this value is r2 then the rotation will not give us this point c the rotation over here by this angle theta this will give some point over here but it will not give the point c so we are only talking about the case when a c is equal to a b so this thing is mentioned over here we are saying if a b c are three points in the argand plane such that a c is equal to a b and this angle is theta then we use the rotation to find e raised to the power iota theta but if a c is not equal to a b then there is no rotation over here we cannot find the point c by just rotating the point b now next we have is the shifting of origin in case of complex numbers so suppose we are considering the x axis and y axis over here this is the x axis and this is the y axis we are saying and corresponding to these we have this point o it is the origin now suppose we have a point over here we are saying this is p of z naught and there is a point over here q that is any general point z we are taking with respect to this origin now if we shift the origin to this point z naught or we are saying shift the origin to the point p then corresponding to this the new coordinates this is the new origin we have o dash this point it is 0 this point it is z naught and the new coordinates of this point p dash we are saying they are 0 this is representing the 0 corresponding to the new axis that is x axis and y axis these are the new axis now the coordinates of this point q dash will be the coordinates of this point q dash will be z plus z it means we are saying that what we have to do is that if we shift the origin at z naught then we have to replace this small z by z plus z naught. corresponding to any point we have to perform this operation next is the definition of the inverse point corresponding to a line or with respect to a line suppose we are saying that a line is given this is the line we are saying uh, this is r s and we have a point p over here and we have another point q over here then p and q are said to be inverse points corresponding to this line if this line is the right bisector of pq that is this line is bisecting this line pq at right angle so basically we are saying that this point p is the image of the point q with respect to this line r s then we are saying that these two points these are the inverse points with respect to the line r s so based upon this we have to show that z1 z2 are the inverse point with respect to the line the equation of this line is given it is z a bar plus a z bar is equal to b if z1 a bar plus a z2 bar is equal to b so we are talking about suppose we have a line over here we are saying this line we are talking about this is the line we are saying this is r this is the point s and we have the points p and q which are representing the points z1 and z2 respectively so the point say this point p is over here and we are saying this is the point z1 and uh, this is the point q we are saying this is the point 
z2 we are saying that show that these are the inverse points so these are given to be the inverse points it means these two lengths are given to be equal and this angle is given to be 90 degree the equation of this line we are saying it is z a bar plus a z bar is equal to b z1 and z2 these are the two points given to us now we have to prove that z1 a bar plus z a z2 bar is equal to b now to prove this result let us consider any point over here we are saying this is the point z we are saying any general point we are talking about this lies on the line rs and if we join a and p and a and q we will have the length of AP should be equal to length of AQ. It means mod of Z minus Z1 should be equal to mod of Z minus Z2. So if we square both sides of this equation, uh, this term it is basically mod of Z square. So if we square both sides of this equation, we obtain Z minus Z1 into z minus z1 bar is equal to z minus z2 into z minus z2 bar if we multiply these terms we will obtain z into z2 bar minus z1 bar plus z1 bar into z2 minus z1 plus z1 z2 bar minus z2 z1 z2 bar is equal to 0 z1 z1 bar minus z2 z2 bar is equal to 0 locus of this point z we are talking about this equation this is giving us the locus of the point z corresponding to z and uh, we know that the equation of this line rs it is given to be z a bar plus a z bar is equal to b so both these lines should represent the, uh, the both these equations should represent the same line so their corresponding coefficient should be proportional so what we obtain from this is that a over uh, a bar the coefficients over here it is a bar over z2 bar minus z1 bar should be equal to a over uh, z2 minus z1 and should be equal to minus b over z1 z1 bar minus z2 z2 bar now if we multiply this first term multiply and divide this first term by z1 multiply and divide this second term with z2 bar we are multiplying and dividing this second term with z2 bar and we add all these terms and we add all these terms we will obtain it is z1 a bar plus a z2 bar minus b over these denominators we have over here these denominators we are talking about they are same all these denominators we are saying these are same so the denominator over here will become zero so this thing implies us that z1 a bar plus a z2 bar minus b this numerator part over here this should be equal to zero and this thing implies us this given condition that is z1 a bar plus a z2 bar should be equal to b we obtain this result next definition we have is the inverse points with respect to a circle so suppose we have a circle with the center at c and the radius of this circle it is r then two points p and q are said to be inverse points with respect to a circle when these three points c p and q these are collinear first condition we have is that this c p and q are collinear and the second condition we have is that c p into c q should be equal to r square where r is the radius of this circle then these three uh, then the points p and q these are said to be the inverse points with respect to this circle now next we have is show that the inverse of a point a with respect to the circle mod of z minus c is equal to r is a complex number uh, a and c are complex numbers c is the center r is the radius is the point this so we are saying we have a circle over here the center of that circle is c and uh, there is a point 
a over here we have a point a over here so this is the line we are talking about this is the point a and we want to calculate the point a dash it is given that the radius of this circle is r so first thing first condition for the inverse point is if we are saying a and a dash these are the inverse point then we have this c a and a dash these three point these are collinear if these three points are collinear so we get that argument of uh, a dash minus c should be equal to argument of a minus c this implies us argument of a dash minus c minus argument of a minus c should be zero this implies us argument of a dash minus c plus argument of a conjugate minus c conjugate is equal to zero and this implies us that argument of a dash minus c into a conjugate minus c conjugate is equal to zero and this implies us that a dash minus c into a conjugate minus c conjugate is real and positive now from the second condition of the inverse points we have that c p into c q is equal to r square so in this case we will have mod of a dash minus c into mod of a minus c should be equal to r square so this implies us that mod of a dash minus c into mod of a conjugate minus c conjugate should be equal to r square mod of z and mod of z bar they are equal and this implies us that mod of a dash minus c into a conjugate minus c conjugate should be equal to r square now from this condition we have this value is real and positive so it means the mod of this value is basically equal to this value itself the mod of this value will be equal to this implies us that a dash minus c into a conjugate minus c conjugate is equal to r scale so this implies us what we want to calculate is we want to calculate the value of a dash a dash minus c is equal to r square over a bar minus c bar this gives us that the value of a dash we have it is c plus r square over a bar minus c bar and this is what we have to prove that the coordinates of this point a dash they are c plus r square over conjugate of a minus conjugate of c next we have is the dot product and the cross product so suppose we are talking about that we have the complex numbers z1 and z2 z1 is x1 plus iota y1 and z2 is x2 plus iota y2 and corresponding to these we have the points x1 y1 and x2 y2 and the these are represented over here this is the region o this is the point p z1 we are representing q z2 we are representing and the angle between these two o p and o q it is theta then we have z2 minus 0 i think z2 minus 0 over z1 minus 0 that is equal to mod of z2 by mod of z1 e raised to the power iota theta so this implies us that z2 by z1 is equal to mod of z2 by z1 e raised to the power iota theta if we multiply this side of the equation by z1 bar that is z1 conjugate so this thing implies us that z2 z1 conjugate that is equal to if we multiply this term over here this term will become mod of z1 square so this will be z1 z2 into cos theta plus iota sin theta so this implies us that z2 z1 bar that is equal to z1 z2 it is mod of these two into cos theta plus iota mod of z1 z2 sin theta so what we get from this is what we obtain from this is that the real part of z1 z uh, z2 z1 bar 
that is equal to mod of z1 mod of z2 into cos theta which is basically the dot product of z1 and z2 and imaginary part of z2 z1 bar that is equal to uh, mod of z1 mod of z2 into sin theta and this is equal to z1 cross z2 so these results are mentioned over here that z1 dot z2 is real part of z1 bar into z2 and z1 cross z2 is imaginary part of z1 conjugate into z2 so we have z1 and z2 if these are the two numbers then z1 and z2 they are perpendicular if their dot product is zero they will be parallel if their cross product is zero the projection of z1 on z2 that will be this is we are saying projection of z1 on z2 that will be z1 dot z2 over mod of z2 similarly the projection of z2 on z1 will be given by this next the area of the triangle if two sides are represented by z1 and z2 is given by half z1 cross z2 area of the parallelogram will be z1 cross z2 and if the z1 z2 they represent the diagonals of the parallelogram if they represent the diagonals of the parallelogram then the area will be given by 1 by 2 mod of z1 cross z2 so these are just the applications from the vectors the dot and cross product we have. next is if z1 is equal to 2 plus 5 iota and z2 is equal to 3 minus iota we have to calculate the value of z1 dot z2 so if we write them in the vector form we are talking about 2 i cap plus 5 j cap dot 3 i cap minus j cap and the dot product we know it is 2 into 3 minus 5 into Uh, plus 5 into minus 1 so the answer we obtain it is 1 so basically we are saying that the formula over here we have it is z1 into z2 is equal to x1 x2 plus y1 y2 similarly z1 cross z2 the formula we have it is x1 y2 minus x2 y1 next we have to third thing we have to calculate it is z2 dot z1 the answer will be same next we have to calculate is z2 cross z1 the answer will be of opposite sign over here the formula has changed you are saying look at this formula over here it is x1 y2 minus x2 y1 over here it is x2 y1 minus x1 y2 last next we have to calculate acute angle between z1 and z2 so if we have to calculate the angle we are using the formula that z1 dot z2 that is equal to mod of z1 mod of z2 into cos theta so the value of cos theta we obtain from here it is in this form we are saying the value of z1 dot z2 we have seen it is 1 mod of z1 mod of z2 we have calculated we have substituted over here so the answer for cos theta we have it is cos inverse of 1 by square root of 290 last we have to calculate is the projection of z1 on z2 and the formula we know it is z1 dot z2 over mod of z the projection of z1 on z2 so the answer is z1 dot z2 it is 1 and mod of z2 it is square root of 10 so the projection of z1 on z2 it is 1 by square root of 10